Greetings Earthlings, it's Edbud here and today I have an initial review for you of the Reebok Forever Floatride Energy 2.0 That's a long name. Before I get into the review, remember to hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below of when new videos are launched. Give the video a thumbs up, like as well please, I most appreciate it. So first Reebok shoe I'm going to review today, quite excited about this one. I got informed about this one by viewer Kevin Scott who said, please go over to the Reebok site, they've got a ridiculous deal on. I picked these shoes up for £29. Yep, £29 UK. I think they're normally about £65 or something, but Reebok had some crazy deal on a couple of weeks ago now, and I thought, I can't quite stop myself from trying these out for 29 quid. So here we go. I've just looked as of the 10th of April, there's still a good deal on some colorways of this shoe. Over on the Reebok site, I think they've got maybe two or three colorways that you can still get for £40, which is still a ridiculously good deal. Okay, let's get to it. So this shoe from Reebok is a neutral running shoe. It uses their Floatride Energy Foam, which feels to me like a touch softer, kind of more densely packed, version of Boost. I think the little beads they use for the foam are a lot smaller, it just feels a lot softer to me. I'll throw up some information on the screen as to the weight of this shoe in my size, which is a UK size 11 or a US size 12. Straight off the bat, I can highly recommend this shoe to pretty much everybody if you want a cheap, inexpensive, high performing shoe. I mean, who doesn't want that? So we'll start off with the upper first. So the upper fit here is great, it's not too roomy. Some decent amount of room in the toe box there. I think it's probably true to size, this one. Great shape around the heel area. For me, it really felt like it locked my heel in position. I didn't really feel this flare at all. Certainly does remind me of the Pegasus Turbo 2. Yeah, it does remind me of the Turbo 2, that heel flare. And a little bit of the Pegasus 36 as well. They're very similar, in fact. I'm wearing this one now. The mesh in the upper strikes a good balance between support and breathability of the shoe. There's a booty construction within the shoe. It starts though a little further down. I've noticed those kind of pieces that go around the midfoot start a little bit further down than something like the Pegasus 36. I find it very breathable today in temperatures of about 12 degrees. I headed out very early this morning for my run to avoid the big buildup of people I was expecting who might be walking around and using their one exercise a day, but also so that I could avoid the very hot weather. It's now 23 degrees outside. For the UK, it's got very warm very quickly. I'm not complaining about it. My wife's loving it, in fact. She's sat out there in the sun just reading her book and enjoying herself. And I'm inside playing video games and playing guitar and looking at running shoes. Because <laughs> why not? Why not? Makes me happy. You've got to do the things that make you happy. I can imagine though this shoe being quite warm for those of you who live in hotter, more humid climates. The laces are a strange sort of rope-like type. I've not really seen anything like this before. Perhaps similar to the Triumph 17. They don't sort of fall like normal laces do. They've, they've got a little bit of sort of straw-like quality about them. <laughs> Something like that. You guys know I don't like elastic laces. These aren't too elasticated. They kind of are what they are. I think if I was a superhero, I would be... I'd be Rigid Lace Man. A kind of useless and forgettable superhero. His comics would probably be left to haunt the comic book bargain bins forevermore. <laughs> Lockdown was really simple in this shoe. It was a process of put the shoe on, tighten the laces up, and knot them. And it was perfect, straight off the bat. You have got these kind of weird lace loops here that they've put in. I've not really seen anything like this where they kind of hide the laces out of the way. I guess you could place the laces under those loops as well once they're tied to stop them coming undone. It's kind of odd, but quite novel. I like that. Everything about this shoe is quite well thought out. I think Reebok sometimes go a little bit under the radar, but certainly a good shoe, this one. It's a bit odd, Reebok but I like it. We certainly don't have a plush ASICS upper here. It's functional, but not too basic. It certainly doesn't feel cheap on foot or in hand. I think it's looking all right in a sort of 90s dad shoe kind of way. I think it's probably just the right side of dad shoe for it to be acceptable. Don't think I've got any other gray shoes either. I like it. Hey, it was 29 pounds. I can't complain. I'm gonna give this one a 2.5 out of three for my initial upper review. On to the midsole next. It's possibly my favourite part of a running shoe review, is the midsole. Mmm. 
It doesn't smell. It actually, it smells like football boots. It smells like soccer boot. Yeah, this one certainly has a more soccer boot style smell about it. So we've got a nine millimeter drop here, 29 millimeters in the heel and 20 millimeters in the forefoot. The midsole here is a wad of molded thermoplastic elastomere. Apparently it's very good for uh, surviving very hot temperatures or temperature changes and molds are very easy to produce in a very standardized consistency. It's certainly got a huge amounts of give to it. I was very, very impressed actually. I was expecting maybe like a Lunalon style thing similar to the Zoom Fly original, but it's not like that at all. The foam underfoot feels really responsive. I think after running in faster tempo pace shoes earlier in the week, the Alpha Fly and also the New Balance Fuel Cell TC and then some slower miles in the Adidas Ultra Boost 20, this felt really responsive, certainly closer towards the Alpha Fly and the New Balance. It's not really like the foam in the Ultra Boost 20 at all. In my initial run, I found this to be a light and nimble shoe. I think it fits more into that Rincon and Beacon kind of category. Absolutely more preferable than the Pegasus 36 to me in terms of the midsole. More along the lines perhaps of the Triumph 17 from Saucony. Certainly less like the quite rigid Evo ride. That one really hasn't started to mellow out for me that midsole and the Evo ride. I think are a really great middle of the road shoe here. I think it could really appeal to those who are just started out running to get some exercise in in these very strange times. I found there wasn't a huge amount of difference in the midsole cushioning at the rear of the shoe and the forefoot. Both areas very soft and very enjoyable at my easy pace, but also very responsive when I picked up the pace in a few surges during my run today. I'd say perhaps not quite as cushioned as the Triumph 17 midsole. That Power Run Plus stuff really is something special. I feel like you've got a good balance between width and cushioning here in the Energy 2. I think I probably could have run a lot faster than I did today. I did want to run some easy miles today. The backs of my legs were really crying out for some for some relief, really. But I think in future runs in this shoe, certainly it's going to produce the goods at some higher paces. So nothing to dislike about the midsole here. I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 3. On to outsole. So I found the outsole to be grippy enough on paths. I went through some sort of dirt trail areas and also through some grass over some twigs. There was a few branches and things like that and I had no issues. Felt really secure on road and tarmac. Really grippy in fact. There's certainly a decent amount of rubber here on the bottom of the Reebok Float Road Energy 2. I think perhaps comparable to the outsole on the Saucony Triumph 17. It's not branded like the Adidas has Continental, but I think there's a decent amount of rubber there. It's gonna provide some reasonable durability, but it's hard to place a number on durability right now. There's a variation on the rubber pattern from the sort of very bobbly area here to larger kind of nubs and pieces in the midfoot. The bobbly area kind of stretches down past the arch, stops around about the heel. There's very little exposed midsole here. You've got a full length rubber outsole so I think it's going to protect the midsole really well. That outsole certainly did the trick for me on my initial run today. I think a reasonable balance between rubber thickness and coverage. Didn't get to try it in any wet conditions. So in mind of that, I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 3 for the outsole on my initial review. Quite a quiet shoe actually as well in terms of the outsole. I did come up towards a couple of people at one point and they just didn't hear me because the shoe's so quiet, I had to kind of call out to them, runner, on your right, and they just ignored me. In terms of value, even at full price of £75, I think it's a great shoe. I think it really could open doors and provide some opportunities for new runners or experienced runners alike. Really great middle of the road shoe. You could use this for a lot of stuff. Some faster paced tempo runs, some slower miles, some long miles at low paces. I think it's a winner. So I'm gonna give this a three out of three for value. Just looking online, they've got some pairs of this shoe in some of the other colorways. I don't think it's this one. It's like a true gray colorway and you can get it for 40 pounds right now. That's a crazy deal, that's brilliant. So if you've got any more questions about the Reebok Forever Float Ride Energy 2.0, Please put them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. We've got a musical interlude and a TV interlude too. I've been listening to this fantastic album from Orange Juice called Rip It Up. So you'll probably know their track Rip It Up. Quite a famous tune. Of course, the songsmith Edwin Collins was the main man in Orange Juice. Another super track on here is Breakfast Time. 
which is, I've got to be honest, my favourite time of the day. So do check out Orange Juice, some really great stuff, kind of lifting the spirits, quite poppy, quite quirky. Another thing I really want to watch again is The Good Life. This was a BBC series in the 70s, I believe, starring Richard Bryars and Felicity Kendall. They play a couple who are trying to sort of live off the land. They've got a suburban house, but they decide to sort of plant lots of vegetables and try and recycle things and reuse things. Really great series, you should check it out. I think the times at the moment are reminding me that we need to do that, I need to do that more. I need to make best use of what I have. So do check that out, the good life. It's time for me to mosey off into the sunset. Hope you're all staying safe and sticking with those rules around your local area. I hope you're able to get out there and run or exercise in some way. I feel it does give us a really great opportunity to keep our sanity and also make sure that we're staying fit and healthy. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below as to when new videos are launched. Give the video a thumbs up, like, and place your comments below. Please share this video with your running buddies. I'd much appreciate it. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.